Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? I thought I'd take a break from Fallout New Vegas and go to one of my favourite games of all time. XCOM, XCOM Enemy Within specifically. For those of you who don't know, XCOM is a turn-based strategy game where you guys rank up and you get new equipment from the aliens and you go ahead and tackle a Xenos threat. So today's challenge will be, can we beat XCOM Enemy Within with only rookies? This means anyone who gets promoted needs to take paid leave and go to the XCOM secret retreat on a lovely resort in a tropical island somewhere. Whilst other rookies come in, and this means we'll be rotating our roster constantly, Constantly. We'll have to watch out late game as the threats get pretty ridiculous. I'm looking at you sector pods and ethereals with Jedi mind tricks that you can just... <laughs> but also money is going to be a problem early on as recruits cost cash. But we'll be able to use equipment and plasma weaponry to level the playing field. At least that's the plan. So we'll see how it plays out. I think this is going to be a long one. So strap in everyone. Let's see how we do. Let's quickly go over the rules first. We can only use rookies. This means we're stuck with the lowest rank soldiers no glitz or exploits of any kind no cheating or modding and we're going to be playing on normal difficulty so of all that let's begin we decide to set up in north america as the airspace costs are pretty expensive and this means that we only have to pay half we'll be able to expand a lot easier with interceptors and we need to expand quickly to make this run a success also america gives a lot of cash so go capitalism i guess the first mission takes place and it goes well. We quickly get the mission sorted and we get the upper hand. Back at base, we get two promotions and Bradford is waiting for us in his prime. As well as Dr. Varlin, who's looking excellent, and Dr. Shen. With the introductions done, we go to mission control and we manage to get our first abduction mission. We decide to go for some engineers as they'll help us get some satellites up and running and reduce the cost for them. Onto the mission and it's only four sectoids. The mission takes place at a comic book shop and it's really not too bad as we just make sure to keep shooting. 45% shots are not something I'd normally recommend but we're taking a page out the 40k orcs and we're using the DACA ladies and gentlemen and you know what? They're onto something because it actually works. Once we're back, two people have to be dismissed. Promotions mean our guys are no longer rookies, they are instead squaddies, but they get to live the rest of their life with a lifetime membership to the XCOM Resort Island. Well done guys, you can retire and live a happy life, no aliens in sight, with all of your families. We then get a request from Argentina. They will give us 200 bucks if we give them satellite coverage. It's a no-brainer because I was going to do this anyway and we can now buy a lot of tea for our troubles. Good job, Argentina. I'm going to give you a high five. Next mission and we go to Russia for the cash. We don't want Europe being up to arms and we must defend the tea people and there is a lot of sectoids. We have three rookies going and to be honest, I thought it would be a heck of a handbasket. But we managed to move around the sectoids and we put some lead in to them to make them understand we go back and sell all the corpses on the grain market so we're reimbursed for the rookies we hand some cash to recruit more rookies in the barracks and build more satellites so thank you council members you remembered your manners also it's the end of the month and the council give us an a rank a for amazing and the budget does not lie ladies and gentlemen it's time for more systems to be built and we order a couple of arc throws we charge headlong into a ufo landing and we need the ufo power source and navigation above all else so no grenades oh no 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 this mission is just scopes and arc throws once we deploy in we see a lot of sectoids and we go ahead and start our combat we use our numbers to start chipping away at them but our arc throws pays off as we stun a couple of sectoids things are going well for us but there's some new enemies seekers these guys are annoying as hell because they're stealthy enemies and we can't see them so we bunch up and cover each other and the seekers are guaranteed to do damage against us by strangling in our rookies gotta admit pretty brutal with the xenos anything goes i guess so we shoot them up and get them the heck off our rookies then it's the green light to go ahead and invade the ufo this is tense but we got our arc throw ready and sure enough the outsider is shot and we capture it and the last sectoid is cowering in the corner boom boom we win as we get back and a whole host of loot well done rookies after a cutscene with the gang, we gotta do what we gotta do. We have more squaddies for the tropical island. It hurts every time I have to do this. 
and then we get more rookies hired. An abduction mission is afoot and is cold hard catch yet again so we can keep up with the facilities. The mission is labelled very difficult. When we go around some seekers we spot them and we bunch up allowing us to take them out no problem. Floats to here too, those of you who are new, they're cyborgs with no legs and instead have a jetpack strapped to their back to yell around the map. We get shot at by them but full cover lets us stay safe until we manage to get close enough to capture one of them. The scrap continues with all the sectoids roaming around and we just gun them down. All hail the Dakar, ladies and gentlemen, all tactics are supreme. Another floater is captured and the mission is a success. Not bad, not bad at all. Time for some tea. Another mission and we go for the engineer so we can concentrate on satellite coverage. This mission is pretty cool, we storm the building and stun a few aliens on the way. The aliens get a kill but rookies aren't ranked up so it's not a huge loss as long as the mission is accomplished. But we kill the last Finn man and we complete the mission, acquiring more plasma weapons when captured aliens for that good old firepower. We get the council mission, friends in low places. Now, this one is quite a controversial one as it will lead to later missions that are very difficult, but it gives a lot of cash and scientists and engineers. So everyone is equipped with a scope and off we go. We get a cutscene and a sectoid has a hole in his head. So just like London on a Monday morning, I guess. Everyone slowly moves up and sure enough, the thin men aren't a problem. They're on their toes and our scopes are doing an excellent job of eliminating them, giving us that extra aim. Once we get the middle of the level, we see the in infamous chrysalid. It takes everyone shooting it to bring it down as we do less than ideal damage but banding together has paid off. Once we complete the mission we get another cutscene as we leave. Once back at base we get a full team of promotions and of course we have to send these brave soldiers to the XCOM tropical island. Here a fellow tea drinker has opened a new island there as well. We get a nice bunch of loot and decide to build three satellites even though we don't have the coverage it'll be very important later. Then we get the most important building unlocked in any XCOM playthrough, the Satellite Nexus. This thing is amazing. It lets us have four satellites and plus one for each Satellite Nexus and Relay connected. Very, very powerful indeed. We immediately go for the UFO power source next as we need this really badly and we need to start our research towards Illyrium. So it's best we get started now. However, we do get a terror mission. This is not great and definitely not ideal for us, but we have to bring our A game here. So we enter a bar as everyone does on a Saturday night and when we do we decide to save a few civilians and then I decide to focus on survival. If the Cornetto trilogy has taught me anything the pub is an excellent place to defend against a zombie invasion. If movies are anything to go by. As I know there's chrysalids and here they are. We take a huge amount of their HP off with overwatches they already have a zombie or two in tow but when they end their turn we fight back and we kill the buggers and then we retreat out the pub as the zombies are slow and pick one of them off as we reload our weaponry since most of our guys are out of ammo. They shamble towards us, we put the hurt on and start storming through as the main threat is gone. So we then storm the pub again and decide to get our guys upstairs for the height advantage. The aliens are dealt with and honestly I didn't think a terror mission could be done with rookies but here we are and we even saved 11 civilians. That's a grand win in my books right there ladies and gentlemen. The satellite uplink is up and we have three satellites so one goes to China, one to India and finally one goes to Brazil allowing us to get our first continental bonus. It's then the end of the month and the council gives us another A rank and we are doing good. Look at the engineers and scientists and that budget is getting fantastic. A large UFO land and this is an excellent opportunity for us to get more resource. So we deploy boots on the ground, everyone with a scope and one arc for and our first encounter. Two floaty men, not a problem, they are dealt with. We go to the UFO, all good as our guys are pretty good shots with scopes. No more 50-50 shots and we see another group and they try and flank but we shoot and capture another threat. And the second is critted so four enemies bagged and now we can enter the UFO. Another group of floaters decide to say hello and we get everyone to start taking them out. We take the vast majority of them out although we were running out of ammo so we switch to pistols and finish off the enemy. We do what we can to chip a couple of them away. After that we use the line of sight to our advantage and we mop up the rest of the enemy and then explore into the heart of the UFO and we stun the poor Xenos. When we go back to base we have to relieve several squaddies since they've ranked up. Have a good time at Resort XCOM guys, you've got a lifetime membership, all paid for. Go enjoy and have a nice life, you've earned it. 
we head on over to Dr. Varlin and research for Elymi is now available, but we use our continental bonus to do all the interrogations and autopsies instantly. We get a lot of items we can now develop and we have a few mutations we can use in the gene lab, but we need a power source to get some building done. We get the abduction missions again and we decide to go with cash for our thermal generator, so off we go to Germany. The battle isn't too bad, just a couple of ruins with floaters and thin men and we just take the back door in, literally and start gunning a couple of clusters down. We do lose a couple of rookies, but when we complete this mission, the results show we didn't do too great, but the mission is accomplished, that's what matters. We replace our rookies, and I'm sorry you missed the holiday destination, guys, but at least the aliens can't hurt you. We'll have margaritas and blue lagoons in your honor. But back at base, we get a request for flashbangs, easily done, and we get more cash for fulfilling it. We research Illyrium, so we are doing phenomenal. But the council come to say hello, and Mr. X is here to give us a mission. We accept a cup of Yorkshire tea in hand, and we have an exciting mission, a train heist. The aliens have got a battleship above, and we have to use the train to set up defensive positions and activate some transponders to allow us to take control of the train and make the alien battleship avoid a city. So we start killing thin men, and we meet our first Mouton. We really need to focus fire these bad boys, as they have 8 HP, so it's quite difficult to take them out, but they spawn in the open, so we can take them down. We actually manage to capture one and Bradford is constantly saying we need to hurry up I'm aware Bradford it's very stressful and we literally chance it to the wire as we have just enough damage for the third Mouton spawn and the last transponder is set and if we had to activate the front of the train we would have lost because we only had one turn left so thank goodness we have to move and we get the cutscene and the train has a nice detail damage done to the side I always comment on this but I always like seeing it I'm very impressed Shortly after we accomplish that mission, the council give us part three of the Friends in Low Places, and that is Gangplank. This is really hard, and why I was a little bit hesitant to accept the mission in the first place. It's an absolute minefield, so before I set off, I decided to get two gas grenades as they'll help with the Moutons, but there is bound to be cyber discs. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with them, so let's sell off and hope for the best. This is going to probably be one of the hardest missions for us, but it'll be a tipping point and definitely turn the tide of this run. So we might as well give it a try. So we get started. The first room is just two thin men, not a problem. They're easy as pie and a sectoid scratches one of our rookies. No biggie, but good on your rookies for keeping it together. We shoot them down so the first room is dealt with. Good stuff. The second room has sectoids and thin men. We take the towers and start using the full cover to shoot them down. We do take a small portion of damage, but we do take a good position to kill a chrysalid, the run killer if we weren't careful. But we gang up on it and shoot it down from a very advantageous position. Now, through that door, from past experience, I know is a cyber disc. I played the game enough times to know, and they can one shot us no problem. We can't take it down in one turn, so it's a bit of a gamble. I do have a plan, but we have to hit it hard. However, we do get a lot of misses. We do get lucky though, as it does miss on its turn. So we then pray to the XCOM gods and Nuffle from Blood Bowl, and sure enough, the cyber disc is down. That was stressful, but we're still not done yet. We get to the last part and we use a gas grenade against a Mouton and Sectoid, putting them on a time clock. We also get to take out the Fin Man and sure enough, the final room. We get the upper hand, disarm the pieces and we have finished Gangplank. That was extremely crazy and took several hours, but it kind of says it all, completing it with rookies. So I'm really happy with that. We finish the mission and the grey market gives us a massive payday thanks to the mission and we no longer have any money worries for the rest of the run. Then we also get the last of our satellites and we put in an order for six of them. And then we visit the grain market and sell even more stuff. We get abduction missions and the mission goes as you'd expect. Although we have our first cluster of mutons and their own grenades are used against them, allowing us to tase more of the big boys and take more of their stuff. We actually get two and clean the aliens out with Daka. When you shoot enough, you'll just eventually hit something. It's just really really true and i'm starting to believe it at some point when we get carapace armor research we unlock the armor we've been waiting for 
Titan Armour Research. This puppy is going to be the answer to so many problems. And we need it oh so badly. It's like tea withdrawals. A Brit just cannot function without it, people. But for now, we decide to go for Light Plasma Rifle ASAP. We need this bad boy right now. Yesterday, even if you could. Pretty please. Then over to Dr. Shen. He is amazing. And he gets the satellite nexus built. And we have five satellites to deploy thanks to this thing. So we go to the situation room. And this is pretty bad. It, this is the before. Hey, it's not great. But then this is after. We get future combat, meaning Foundry and Officer Training School projects are half price. And we also get All In from Africa, a 30% boost to income. What is not to love people? Life is good right now. Just look at them panic levels, damn it. It is going fantastic. But all good things have to come to an end. Exalt decide to show up and ruin our good time. But it's okay. We'll just ignore them. It's fine. On to good news again, and we get more building done. And our facilities now have the fundamentals in place. We're even getting a foundry and a gene lab to boost our rookies for those extra tough missions. Our covert ops goes okay, and once the mission is done, Exalt are not in one of the five most popular countries. Very cryptic with the intel, but okay. We get the council report, and dearie me, this is amazing. We are in the money and have an abundance of engineers. This is swell and going fantastic. So we hire so many rookies so we can max out the barracks. We're booming at the seams now. We're all good and the foundry and boy do we queue the upgrades. Our soldiers will be a force to be reckoned with once all these are done. More abduction missions and since we have only Europe that's not in our satellite range, all of the abduction missions are in Europe, so we just select whatever we wish. Upon deployment, we meet the Mutons, a nice alien grenade fresh from the foundry tears them apart. We get a nice old taser on them and take their plasma rifle. We also destroy his buddy, and these rookies are armed to the teeth, courtesy of Dr. Shen. We move on in into another room, the aliens have a nice grenade to get a triple kill, and we move on in with our live plasma rifle and wipe them out. We achieve another victory over Exalt, and this tip is much more straightforward. Exalt is not in Asia. Thank you. That is the sort of tip we like to hear. But another terror attack is afoot, and the plasma rifles will make this a whole lot easier. The terror mission starts, and it's all chrysalid, so we just hold position just in case a survival is key. And sure enough, they come pouring out, and they rush us. They are scary, but plasma weaponry says no. And grenades on top of that, well... They are now dead chrysalids. Not so tough now, are you, fellas? Our main threat is a cyberdick, but it is no match for our combined firepower. Even if it repairs itself. Good show there, cyberdicks. But we have explosives. This is for the rookie your friend killed earlier. Farewell, senior cyberdisc. We finish the mission with some survivors rescued and head back to base. We finally get the armor we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. That's Titan armor. We are now immune to strangulation, poison, and fire. And with a hefty 10 HP buff, we are at our peak with equipment. So it's time to get outside our shard research. We get the gene lab built so we can get genetically enhanced rookies for them extra tough missions. This will be necessary, but will have to be used sparingly. It's a nice day as we decide to get full satellite coverage in Europe thanks to the satellite nexus being constructed. And of course, we will finish with our friends from across the pond, meaning the whole world is now covered with satellites, allowing us a big ass budget and all the continent bonuses and our budget shows the result XCOM is just doing amazing and the paradise island shall be the best known island to man so all of our veterans can just retire very nicely we get the outsider research and a cutscene plays we found an alien base and this would be tough but we are armed to our pinkies so let's knock some aliens down when we deploy it's quite rough with a cyber disc and two mutons but we are armed to the teeth and we also have have really good armor so the armor is paying off letting us survive so we can retaliate and end them rightly the next enemy is the cyber disc we get a lovely crit and turn it into a heap of scrap metal sorry mr cyber disc but you will now be dubbed the floating cd player Onto chrysalids, a well-timed grenade allows us to gun them down one after the other as we can move close and unleash hell after we do, we get to see a mech toy, an alien version of a mech. This fella is unlucky though, as we use all of our guys to fill him with plasma. I gotta admit, you're a beefy boy and you're a bit of a juggernaut, but we gotta take you down, buster. He moves into our blind spot, but we charge on in and take him out. But the aliens are clever and have a final trick up their sleeve this mission. They mind control our rookie with a sectoid commander. But this went exactly as planned, as we can now sneak up on him and damage him with a 
single shot and a grenade making him go down to one health and then like this screen shows he is stunned and we win since we captured him a cutscene plays and bradford being young as he hasn't dealt with the aliens yet unlike us he thinks it's time to celebrate dr varland though those there's more than meets the eye to this but when we're done with everything we take the new squaddies to resort xcom all expenses paid of course and the loot is absolutely ridiculous really good stuff here and world panic is also reduced by two and the situation room is looking amazing people not a sign of panic anywhere take that aliens the sectoid commander gets a cheeky interrogation so we can now get the silabs constructed and our rookies can certainly use it the genetics lab is up and running so we can now get two upgrades which is depth perception plus five aim and crit not bad and we also go for adrenal gland so we get extra offensive power when we kill someone we'll use these guys sparingly for difficult missions but three rookies enter in and let's hope this pays off after the sectoid commander has been autopsied it has a g mod this will come in handy against ethereal so it's over to the council and what can i say we're doing fantastic the facilities are making our rookies have that extra punch in combat the xcom base is under attack and this this mission oh boy this mission i tried everything and it's not the damage or the enemy type but the rookies they just keep panicking making it almost impossible and i wanted to give up but you guys deserve Bella, and I'm not about to do that. So we just keep trying and trying again and again and again. So what ends up happening is everybody hurries up to the upper floor, ready for the enemy airborne division whilst dealing with the mech toys. Bradford gives us some reinforcements, and they aren't armed with plasma weapons, but weapons can still hurt. So thank you, Bradford. Now the flyers come on in, and a couple of well-placed explosives weaken them. We start systematically taking them out, and the enemy CD player does a move I've never seen before, and it does a lot of damage. But we're still alive, and we take them all out. Enemy reinforcements are pouring in, and we pick them off as they come in, and allowing us to beat them down with sheer numbers and using the upper floors for a bonus to our aim. And also, the battle trance mutations allow further aim and crit bonuses. Using trench warfare, I guess, we go after not one, but two sectoid commanders, and they go after the right side of our men. And since there's two of them, we decide to do what the orcs do in 40k and shoot as many bullets as possible at them, and Todd Howard would do proud as it works it actually works we then wait for about 10 minutes a sub disc comes in and we turn it into scrap metal in one turn since it's a flyer and all eyes are on the cd player and it just goes down without too much of a fuss we then get to the mech bay and just destroy the poor mech doid allowing us to complete this mission honestly i didn't think it was possible and it took six hours and we're through the end screen here is 32 enemies got destroyed now that that's done we're in the end game we get a lot of promotions and good job guys you can have a mansion anywhere in the world or on the xcom isle anywhere you wish we also get the fusion lance ready to take on any ufos the aliens have to offer and we build a full set for our aircraft and we also have neural dampening as a gene mod we needed this a 100%, but it's better late than never. We then rapidly go into the end game as we see Dr. Shen and Dr. Valen see the relay chamber work and Central detects the UFO, the Overseer UFO. We have free aircraft to catch it, so we scramble. When it's shot down, we see our worst nightmare. Now I present to you the Sectopod, the most feared enemy in XCOM. Even with some of my previous challenges, they are absolutely a nightmare to deal with they do not mess around and we are a bunch of rookies so this thing can kill us in one turn if it really knew what it was doing it's really just a matter of taking pot shots to delete that helper and keeping us running away and keeping ourselves alive it manages to blow up half the ufo also kills two of our rookies but we do take it out i never thought it could be done but here we are it's not over till it's over because there are still some alien forces accompanying it after some dicey encounters, we take out the Mouton Elites with some really close calls, but the Ethereal is here, and this bad boy is quite the opponent. His guards were tricky, but since there's two of us, and doing the maths, I decide to just rush him, and sure enough, he can only mind control one of us, and we emerge victorious as the Ethereal is rendered useless. So we've done a Sectopod and an Ethereal in the same mission with rookies. I simply don't know what to say at this point. 
So with the ship beaten and us getting curb stomped by a sector pod, we get a cutscene and see what the ethereal was guarding. A glowing sphere. So when we research the thing, we are granted the Gollop Chamber. Fun fact, everyone, one of you guys pointed out in a previous video, the Gollop Chamber is actually named after one of the developers in XCOM. The more you know, it's quite cool, actually. We get the Psy Armor researched, then we use the device, and Duke Nukem, I don't know why the guy looks like this, but hey, more power to him, he decides to use it without his sunglasses. And we're in the end game now, and the bad guys talk to us in a cutscene. It's time to go aboard the temple ship and see what we can do. This is our team. This is the best I can muster. They're all rookies. One Psy soldier fully gene modded. Amazing. Another gene modded soldier and two regular rookies. So let's see if we can do this. We get an epic scene. We infiltrate the alien ship and off we go. Now the good news here is we can use powerful abilities from our one Psy soldier. He is still a rookie but he's a very gifted Psy soldier due to story reasons. So we have something up our sleeves. So just to show you how powerful he is, an alien CD player just gets absolutely shut down just from him alone. And then the second CD player just lets us gang up on it and absolutely get destroyed. Then it's floaters and they're pretty easy thanks to plasma and also chrysalids. But our chosen rookie just swamps them no problem as the rest of the squad cleans up. Now we get Thin Men, they're not too bad, once again, and then we have a little bit of Moutons with a Berserker. Now, the Berserker only had a 20% chance of getting Mind Control, but I thought, why not? Why not try and Mind Control him, otherwise we can just shoot him. And sure enough, it works. It's absolutely phenomenal, and then what we do is we send him to the Sector Pods. And once we find the sector pods, we then just grenade the absolute heck out of them. But it still isn't enough. So we have to let the Berserker die and go get a Mouton mind control and sell up a position and just start firing with everything we got, including Mouton and psychic powers to destroy them. We deplete all of their health bars, but also deplete all of our resources in the process, including two aliens who knew better than to face humanity. So we press on against the Mouton elites. We use mind control to great effect and the Mouton elites just almost entirely kill each other so we can now face the final bosses, the Ethereals. We creep up on one of their flanks and we manage to take out one of the Ethereals due to sheer luck. We do the ultimate cheese and we manage to mind control an elite Mouton. We then have some of our rookies die but we then start attacking with a 40% chance to the big bad. We hit twice both attacks and the enemy have almost beaten us and we decide to go ahead and use a Void Rift ending this campaign, allowing us to take the victory, answering the question, can you beat X common enemy with him with only rookies? And yes, yes you can, but late game is hard as nails and I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, that was simply brutal and just outright difficult. Not for the reasons I thought, but recruiting rookies early game is a huge money sink. And to keep recruiting them as they just kept getting promoted, honestly, the promotions really shut us down from early building in the base. And once the funding of the base is built, it's not really a problem. But then you've got the late game enemies, which can sweep you if you're not careful. And you need to be very tactical and very strategic and sometimes it all just comes down to luck trying to get that crit shot or get that hit when it wouldn't be possible so whilst possible it really was turning up the dial for difficulty now for the next challenge i'm going to do skyrim and go ahead and try to beat skyrim as a lumberjack because why not who doesn't love lumberjacks you know and it seems like fun and there's a woodcutter's act so we can give it a go for sure so for that Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and I appreciate you watching. Thank you for everything. Have an excellent day and I hope you have an awesome and phenomenal evening. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. You mean the absolute world and you are absolutely amazing. And please, please, please look after yourselves. You guys are awesome and I love you guys so much. Up in Insane Frame, thank you very much for watching. You guys are absolutely wonderful. I'll see you in the next video, so stay tuned. I've got some awesome challenges planned, so hope to see you there. Anyway, take care. You're all amazing. Look after yourselves. I've been Insane Brain, and I'm signing off. See you in the next video, guys. Take care.